Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. So y'all, we made it. Welcome to 2020. Um, this is exciting. Uh, I just really feel like this is going to be a really exciting year for all of us. Uh, not just an exciting year, but a really a, an exciting decade to come. So congratulations to all of us that made it through the hell that has been the last, I want to say two and a half years. I know for many of us, there was a massive activation that happened in the summer of 2017. I know that's when my activation really happened, <laughs> like big time. And then, you know, 2018, 2019, 2019 especially though, were periods of purging and healing and letting go of things that no longer serve us so that we can create space for that which we truly desire and what we really want in our lives. So welcome to that decade where it seems that this stuff is gonna be coming through. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. And also, I'm very excited for you guys to see the readings for this month, um, for January of 2020. Uh, as I was doing them, you know, they were all ugh, all coming out really great. Even though there were some, you know, challenging parts for certain signs or certain situations, ultimately, though, it's all a good thing. And it's all, um, Spirit is saying, even now, it's a process of healing and... Um, uh, process of healing that is taking place in order for us to really break free from the chains and do what it is we truly desire in our lives yeah so just a few things um i want to mention first if you are interested in getting a personal reading please don't hesitate to email me all of the information is in the description box below um just keep in mind that if you are looking for a private a personal reading your best bet is to just email me first as that's where I'm most likely going to direct you. You can hit me up on Instagram. That one is a pretty good option. I'm, However, I'm going to be asking you for your email address anyway, so you may as well just want to email me if you want to do that. Do not send any inquiries through Facebook. I will not be taking uh, private reading inquiries through Facebook. Yes, that is just not as a reliable source for communication at least in my opinion, as I've experienced moving forward, yeah? Email is always the best, but also Instagram is a good way too. You can find all of that information, the link to my Facebook page, the link to my my Instagram page, and my email address, along with all of the readings that I offer, their descriptions and prices in the description box below, yeah? Um, so for the readings this month, Oracle Guidance is coming again from the Earth Warriors Oracle. I really, really love this deck. This was a gift from one of our subscribers here. Thank you so much, Sam. I really love this deck. Um, and then the readings themselves are structured a little bit differently. First of all, I highly recommend that everybody watches the Capricorn reading as we are in Capricorn season right now, or at least as for the month of January. Um, a very happy birthday to all the Capricorns out there, by the way, and also a very happy birthday to the January Aquarians. Yeah. But um, I do recommend that people do watch the Capricorn reading because even if you don't have Capricorn in your chart, uh, it can give you a good amount of insight as to um, you know what you could expect during Capricorn season. Moving Moving forward, I do think I want to do that more often. I may actually just start doing a reading, a separate reading for the season that we're moving into because I kind of feel like, uh, you know, I don't want you guys' readings to get hijacked when it's supposed to be like, say, for Capricorn, but it turns into a big old collective reading. So that's the way it worked this time. Moving forward, I think I am going to do a separate reading because I think it would be good just to have a general reading just to see what's going on for the collective um, in terms of the different seasons that we're moving into. Also, for the readings, I have now included Jupiter in the situation. And it's funny because for the last like six months of 2019, I was kind of hearing myself say and want to say Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. I just never actually did it. Um, but starting this year, it is a thing. Um, Jupiter is a great way, like say if you're looking in terms of love, if you're looking for like a husband or your or like a masculine counterpart, you would look to your Jupiter sign. And conversely, if you were looking for like a wife or a feminine counterpart, you would look to your Venus sign. But also Jupiter is a planet of luck um, and, and finance and fortune and whatnot. And so if you kind of want to see like maybe how your career is going or whatnot, whatever, you might want to look at Jupiter. Yeah. So I just threw that in there. Um, in case you guys were interested, yes. Also, moving on into 2020, my channel is now 
up and eligible for memberships and with memberships come different tiers of perks and whatnot and so over the year of 2020 i am going to be rolling that out i have some planning to do with it i wish i could roll it out you know january 1st it's ready to go but that's really not realistic because i didn't get the email the notification about it until like mid-December when I was actually, I was in the middle of recording the last Twin Flame reading that I did for December, which is a great one. If you haven't seen it yet, absolutely go ahead and watch that. But I got the email during that reading. And so I'm now, I got to take some time to plan and see what I want to do, what kind of perks I want to offer um, and all that kind of stuff. But that is coming. I'm super, super excited about that. Um, I'm going to be going through a whole rebranding process during the month of, or during the year of 2020. So I'm super, super excited to bring you guys more content. And I would, if you're interested in becoming a member, I would highly recommend that you do that because then that's going to provide me with more financial stability in order to devote more time to the channel and to the readings and to you guys. And there are more things that I want to offer, like tarot uh, services, like count, um, uh, counseling services. If you're interested in learning the tarot, um, that might actually be a membership perk that I'll offer, like a you know for members only weekly like tarot masterclass or some something like that. You know what I mean? I mean it's just an idea, but um, if you are interested in membership, I would highly recommend that you consider doing so once it's available, because again, that will allow me more time um, and to be able to devote. To the channel yes okay guys so i guess that's it i'm gonna stop rambling and let's just get into the reading yeah cool hey there libra welcome to your reading for january 2020 thank you so much for tuning in so i know i mentioned this in the in the um in the intro already but i do want to just give you guys a special heads up. I know there's most likely going to be sound or a lot of noise from the construction across the street, but today specifically, they have been in, uh, jackhammering it intermittently. And so that can be super, super loud. So I just want to, they're not doing it right now, but I just want to give you guys a heads up that could fire back up while we're in the reading. Um, I apologize if that is really distracting. If you find that super distracting or whatnot, whatever, I'm going to do my best to drown it out. But at this point, I've, got, I've gotten used to it, so it really won't affect me much. But just to let you guys know, all right? All right, Libra, so getting into your energy here, I'm going to be, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, uh, I really feel like you guys are working extra hard or whomever, whatever Libras I'm channeling for right now that I'm, that I'm connecting to. You're working super hard <laughs> to stay in balance. And what this really feels like is an emotional balance. I was um, I was meditating on your energy before I started doing this reading, before I started recording. And um, I was seeing, like I was envisioning, you know, the scales that Libra represents, you know, the scales of balance and whatnot. Um, you could even say, consider them the scales of justice. Also, Libra is associated with the justice card, you know, in the over in the uh, major arcana of the tarot, but um, the scales of balance, we'll say. And what I was seeing, actually, eventually, as I kept like feeling into this energy, I was seeing um, like a heart on one side and a feather on the other, which can symbolize, which symbolizes the heart and the mind. Um, and what I'm hearing for some of you right now, I'm hearing ego balance. Um, I, I'm, I'm feeling an energy of needing to or trying to strike a balance between the heart and the mind. And I, I feel for you, some of you specifically, that this is really, really a strong effort, a concerted, a concerned effort to not get overly emotional, to not allow your heart to outweigh the mind. Um, but then in that, there's also an energy of trying not to allow your mind to outweigh your heart. And what I feel like this is just a very emotional circumstance or situation for you that you're really struggling to find balance with in. Um, and then also what I was feeling in this energy was this, there was a need to, to strike this balance in order to stay in control. And that's not necessarily to control everything in your external reality, even though, especially with what I'm feeling from these this pre-shuffle energies, the cards that came out here, you may really want to try and control everything in your external reality, but you're, fi you're maybe finally starting to realize or just starting to realize that you can't control everything in your, in your reality. All you can really control is how you 
perceive of something or how you react to something. And that's where this energy of working on trying to find this balance, especially in terms of your emotions versus like your head over your heart, your mind versus your emotions, whatnot, whatever. Um, that's really the control you are most focused on. Okay. So <clears throat> getting into your actual cards for the pre-shuffle, overall energy here is the wheel of fortune. All right. So there's some sort of karmic change that's happening here. There's some sort of massive cycle that's coming to an end. You also can see that with the 10 of pentacles that is here. Now you have two tens, the wheel of fortune being a 10, the 10 of pentacles being a 10. I feel like this is the, the 10 of pentacles here for you, Libra is speaking to what i'm hearing is um the ending or the change of a long term long-standing relationship um a marriage could be coming to an end um a, a long-term partnership could be coming to an end this also is kind of giving me a twinge of a divine counterpart situation maybe even twin flame you do have the empress here with the star now the empress can represent the divine feminine and i am picking up that for some of you that are in a twin flame scenario you actually you could be dealing with a with an aquarius an aquarian that's what's coming that just came through i just picked up on that again but i don't normally like to speak on that unless i'm feeling something specifically and that was something that did just come up specifically so if that resonates with you then go ahead or you might actually have aquarius in your chart somehow um <clears throat> which is interesting because i just remember that the aquarius video is titled we're done here and oof, okay but what i'm getting with this is if it, this the empress can be the divine feminine in a twin flame relationship divine counterpart relationship uh, or situationship i'm hearing in terms of that i really do feel like there is an energy of closing out a cycle, um, maybe a cycle of abuse or narcissistic manipulation, um, and coming into an energy of and a space of loving yourself unconditionally, and doing whatever it needs, to, doing whatever you need to do in order to receive some sort of healing or some sort of wish fulfillment. And I really kind of do feel like that has to do with separating from someone. And if this is a this is a twin flame situation, this would be separating energetically or maybe even physically cutting out your divine masculine, your twin flame. And this is all in an effort to be loving, caring and nurturing and unconditionally loving to yourself in the way that you would need to be in order to find a sense of wholeness and security within. But that doesn't come without its complications because then you have the two of swords here and it's like you really don't want to have to do this it's almost as if you're trying to block yourself from doing so by finding maybe trying to look for ways that you don't have to completely let go that you don't have to completely surrender that you don't have to completely give in to um a period of separation but you in this case you absolutely do need to because you need to separate your energy from the situation so that you can allow the karmic cycle to really close out so that you can allow the karmic energy between you and this other person or the, even the toxic energy whatnot whatever you need to allow yourself some time to detox from that Okay, and I know it's difficult. I know you may not necessarily want to do it, but you abs it is absolutely necessary because if you don't do that, then you will only continue to perpetuate this type of cycle. And even this doesn't even have to be a twin flame situation. The Empress doesn't have to represent the divine feminine as in you embodying or being the divine feminine in that type of connection. The Empress can also represent a a, a, an energy of nurturance, unconditional love, and care it can represent a rebirth after a death a period of gestation even so regardless as to whether or not this is a twin flame relationship or a soulmate relationship a divine partnership if that's what you want to call it it doesn't even have to be a romantic situation it could be anything in your life that has been toxic that has been twisted that maybe has been narcissistic or something that has just been a, a cycle that needs to close out a lesson that has is completed ten of pentacles or a cycle that is completed ten of pentacles with the world with, i'm sorry with the the wheel of fortune it feels like for whatever this is for you, Libra, or maybe this is for the cross watcher, you're needing to enter into this space of 
a gestational period where you cocoon for a while and you start to go through some sort of healing that is necessary for you to make to move forward on your journey and in this energy of trying to find balance that i that i was picking up on in the beginning here it's like you're trying to come to terms with it it's almost as if you're trying to decide whether you should actually follow through with the guidance <laughs> that you're being given in separating or, or removing yourself from a certain situation in order to heal you're not quite sure you're not quite sure if it's the right thing to do. There could be some sort of elements of like abandoning certain people or feeling like you're abandoning certain things, but ultimately it's the right thing for you to do. Now, this also could be a situation in which you need to remove yourself from the situation and go through this little like gestational period or like cocooning phase so that you can understand what moves to make moving forward. It might be, you know, you don't really know how to deal with this situation right now with that two of swords energy. And that's because you're too wrapped up in it. The other person's energy or the other energies are too intertwined with your own energies. So you're needing to uh, separate yourself to get a better sense of where you stand in the situation. Okay. Okay, Libra. So let me give this one more shuffle here and then we'll see what else we've got for you. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Librans, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of January 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Libra, I'm giving this five shuffles here. Um, one, so one of the first colors that I saw for you, Libra, as I started doing that little prayer and channeling whatnot, this is two, is yellow. I really kind of feel like a lot of you may be in the process of trying to figure out what actions to take moving forward um, or whether or not you should take a certain action. Like I said, take a certain action that you have been kind of guided to take for some time. Yellow is the color of the solar plexus, your willpower. Um, you really, uh, this is three. Um, I'm also seeing purple for you now, which is divine wisdom, divine understanding. You might, some of you may be really trying to come to terms with some action you have taken in the past or some action that you may need to be taking in the future, okay? I feel like there's a very indecisive energy for you right now, Libra. You don't exactly know how to handle it. You don't exactly know what to do. You don't exactly know what direction to move in or what steps to take. And that's where this battle between the, the mind and the heart is coming in here, or at least this effort to try and balance, find a balance between the mind and the heart because they may be pulling you in two completely different uh, directions. Um, ooh, yeah, okay. Number four. And number five for my Libras. Sun, moon rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January 2020. Let's see what we've got for you, Libra. Boop. <laughs> All right. Overall energy. Okay, well, look, we have the chariot here, Libra. I mean, this is a pretty good thing. Um, you know, and the, the chariot here is absolutely speaking to the, the, the element of needing to find a balance between the head and the heart or between, we'll say like opposing energies such as the masculine and the feminine. Um, this is your goal. I mean, I, especially with what we've been, what I've been channeling here so far about trying to find this balance, it's like. You may not be in this balance right now, but this is the overall theme for you, or at least for this, either for this month or for the message for however long this resonates for you moving forward in 2020. It's about finding a balance in order to get yourself going in the right direction. It's bringing the opposing sides, i.e. the head and the heart together to find common ground so that you can move forward in the direction that you're being guided to move towards or for some of you you're you're needing to find balance to the point where you don't even know where you're trying to go you don't even have any sort of any sort of semblance of what where it is you're actually striving for what you could be working towards 
And it's not like you need to ultimately know everything about the final destination, but it's almost as if you don't even really have a clear understanding of what it is you would be, even be moving for, towards. It's just that you have this feeling of moving. Of, of needing to move forward towards something, okay. But, but but it's not like you don't have completely any idea. It's like, well, I know I just said I just said that. I'm, I'm contradicting myself a little bit. For some of you, you don't have any idea. But for others of you, it's like there are, there's a plethora of options and you're needing to just focus or, or iron one down. You're needing to find, either way, however this is resonating for you guys, the energy that I'm picking up on here with this chariot is your theme right now is to find a balance between the head and the heart so that you can be in alignment and move forward, okay? Underneath the chariot, you, wow, you have the hermit. But in order for you to do that, you're going to have to do some soul searching. And there you go. There's that hermit energy that I was talking about, or at least like that cocooning that was coming forward with like the empress and the star. This is you taking some time away, separating yourself, isolating yourself a little bit so that you can get in touch with your energies here. For some of you, there may have been people around you for the longest time that have been really pushing you or influencing you to move in a certain direction. And now your heart and your mind are starting to fight each other because it's like your mind says okay well we're need we need to be going this way because so and so said i need to be doing this this and this to get to this that and the other and then your heart is like well wait a second that's not even really where I want to go. And then your mind is like, well, what the hell are you talking about? Of course, this is where we want to go. This is where we've been told we need to go for, for, for so long. And then your heart's like, well, no, exactly. That's the point. We're being told we need to go this way. That doesn't necessarily mean that we actually want to go this way. And then your mind is like, well, what the fuck, man? Like, so what are we supposed to do? And then your heart's like, well, I don't really know. I mean, we've never really talked about it this way. And then your, your mind just gets frustrated and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. So you need to, to take some time to yourself to figure this out, okay? And it's, this is really an energy of needing to remove yourself so that you can detox from all the other influ external influences that are that are kind of clouding your judgment right now. Okay, underneath the hermit, you have the high priestess, Libra. This is number one, this is that purple energy that I was seeing for you. This is the higher wisdom, divine wisdom, wisdom from source, wisdom from your higher self. This also could be downloads from your higher self or conversations with your higher self. But Libra, you have three major arcanas just in your overall energy so far. And in your pre-shuffle energy, you had two of them. You had the star and the empress. Was there another? No, it was the ten of pentacles and the two of swords with... What underneath? What was at the bottom of the deck? Oh, the Wheel of Fortune was at the bottom of the deck. You have so much major arcana coming through for you right now. This is a this is a pivotal point. This is a major turning point for you in your spiritual development. Okay, this is a major turning point. Underneath the High Priestess is the Four of Wands. Yes, Libra. Okay, so this might seem really, really challenging for you. This may even be an energy where this is kind of like coming out of nowhere for you. It's like, whoa, I was, I guess, I mean, I, I, I guess I was doing so well before, but now all of a sudden it's like I'm going, I'm hearing I've gone through this awakening and now nothing is the way it seems. Nothing is the way it used to be. I don't identify in the same ways that I used to. I don't want to do. I do not. I'm, I don't want to do the same things that I was pursuing in the past. I'm not passionate about the same things that I used to be passionate about. That kind of energy. It's like it's literally coming out of nowhere. But really, it's not. Your conscious mind or your ego may be saying it's coming out of nowhere, but it's actually coming from a place of you being very solid and secure and maybe even grounded in a certain sense of spiritual awakening or spiritual reality. The Four of Wands can represent the home, so you, this might be a situation that you're dealing with with the home, but also with the, with the Wands being a suit of spirit and Four being a number of stability, this also can represent your own spiritual foundation that is providing you with a... a uh, 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 a certain foundation or grounding in order to bloom in a way that you've never bloomed before. It's like, you know, you being, you're like a plant that has been going along for so long without any real flowers or real buds, but now all of a sudden you have these big, beautiful buds that are, that are growing from you that cannot be ignored and are actually starting to bloom. And it's kind of like, well, what the fuck is this? I've never seen this before. Holy shit. What do I do with this? It almost feels kind of scary, but it's really just spirit is saying it's enlightenment. It's awakening. It's awareness. You're being much more aware. You're becoming much more aware of yourself. And for some of you Librans out there, it's even coming to the point where 
your empathic abilities are really starting to open up. So you're becoming hypersensitive to the external influences around you, which is causing you to really need to cocoon at this time so that you can release all of that external energy and fill that back with your own energy that's starting to like really flood your system, okay? So if you're really feeling this strong tug of war or this strong push or pull right now it's the effect of the the battle between the energies of the ex, like the external energies and the of people and circumstances that are outside of you that have kind of infiltrated and occupied a bunch of your space it's a battle between that energy and your own energy that's coming forward and trying to fight for its own space which it's its space its rightful space is being taken up by others input you know what I mean? So you really, there are a lot of you out there that really need to take a step back and remove yourself from all of that stuff so that your own energy can occupy its own space, okay? Ooh, okay, Libra. Um, what was this? This was the Four of Wands, right? Okay. So getting into the rest of your reading here, first half, second half of your reading, you could look at this as the first half, second half of your month. Take it as it resonates, yeah? First set of surrounding energies for you, Libra, in the first half of your reading, you have the Nine of Swords. I mean, yeah. But really, Libra, the only reason that you have this anxiety or this fear or this restlessness is because you really need to take some time to yourself, okay? This is not, to me, this does isn't coming across as um, self-fulfilling prophecies or really like any sort of nightmarish or fearful type energy. You might feel, you might be having, you may very well be having nightmares, um, but I, it's not necessarily that like something is chasing you down or that you're trying to hide from something or trying to escape from something. It's literally an effect of the battle between your own energy trying to take its own space and the energies of others that are trying to hold on to the space that it has occupied, all right? And so that's why you're being filled with this anxiety, this restlessness, maybe even this a certain sense of fear. And if you are feeling fear, what I'm feeling is that that is, again, a representation of this external energy that you have kind of taken on to be yours and you have you kind of consciously understand it to be yours when it really isn't but it's that energy kind of freaking out because it knows its time is up and it's going to have to find a new host soon um eventually or some or whatnot whatever it's kind of like in that that um survival mode and you're picking up on that thinking that you're you're needing to survive when in reality that's not even your energy okay Keep that in mind. Nine of Swords is coupled with <laughs> the Nine of Pentacles. Yes. Yes. So the Nine of Pentacles actually is you, Libra, okay? Or whomever I'm speaking to here, if this is the cross watcher. Um, and if this is a cross watcher, I just picked up on maybe this is like the fact that you're in the in a relationship with a really abusive or maybe manipulative or narcissistic Libra and their energy is trying to keep a hold on you and you're trying to break free. You're trying to be independent here. Regardless of who actually, who, where, whoever falls on what side of the situation specifically, what I'm feeling here is the Nine of Swords is the energy of the is the energy that has that has occupied this foreign space that isn't naturally theirs and the nine of pentacles is the energy of that of, is the natural energy of that space that has been occupied that's working on breaking free and emerging and taking its own power back taking its own space back okay wow individual independent strong uh affluent i'm hearing um, financially solvent, any of all that stuff. It's independence. The, the Nine of Pentacles also represents sovereignty. So this is literally a battle for your own sovereignty right now. Don't, don't feel bad about it. Don't get scared. Eventually you will win if you persevere. It's just, it's literally a battle right now. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Libra, in the first half of your reading. Oh, there's the star again. But this, see, the star is representing healing, but also wish fulfillment. The wish fulfillment is coming through in terms of taking your power back, re being released from these, these clutches, yes, from this stronghold. The star is coupled. Oh, also, there's also wish fulfillment in that too. And not just healing. Did I say that already? Probably. Yes, I did. Okay, moving on. The star is coupled with, ah, the five of swords. So 
there is definitely an energy of needing to walk away from this battle. It's like I'm really feeling an energy of, you know, laying down the sword and not not feeding into this cycle any longer, especially if you're in an energy of dealing with um, a narcissist. OK, the one thing that you do not want to continue doing is enabling the narcissist, especially when you have now become aware of how you may have been enabling them when you didn't really recognize it in the past. Now that you're aware of it, you really have got to stop because once you're aware of it and you continue doing it, then I mean, I want to say the karma gets even stronger because now you're consciously aware of it and consciously feeding into it. You know what I mean? Your wish fulfillment, and somebody needs to hear this, your wish fulfillment and your healing is going to happen or is going to start when you finally decide to stop fighting, to stop fighting along, to stop going along with the situation, to stop enabling the situation, to stop fighting with the situation, to stop trying to prove something to someone. For some of you, you are in, an, in a relationship or in a situationship or just a situation, whether that be romantic or business or family. You are in a certain circumstance with either a person or a group of people, and you are in a mindset of, if I just keep doing X, Y, and Z, I can finally get them to wake up and, and maybe change or see the error of their ways, blah, blah, blah. That is a losing battle. That is absolutely a losing battle. Especially if it's a, part, if it's a situation with like a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath. It's like... They, they, the more you try to push, and it's, and they, you don't even have to be under one of those labels to, to, to deal with this. This is kind of a human thing, but the more you try to push something on someone that obviously does not want to hear it, the stronger they are going to resist, and the worse the situation is going to get. Really, the only way to really teach somebody, I guess is to separate from them, to stop enabling them, and to lead by example, to live your best life. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that anyone, you know, act in spiteful or vindictive ways and try and like shove it in somebody's face that you're much better off without them. But at the same time, you're not going to really teach them anything by staying in the situation and tangoing with them. You're not going to beat them at their own game. So why even try? And that's what I'm getting. Why continue to try? Why continue to force yourself to try? I mean, at this point, at, cer at a certain point, it's, it just becomes Einstein's definition of insanity. Doing something over and over again the same way, expecting a different result. It's like, no, get yourself off that karmic wheel. Your healing and your wish fulfillment will start to come to fruition the moment you put down that sword and walk away. Okay. And for some of you, I'm hearing you say, well, I'm doing this to try and keep some sort of balance. Libra, that's really not, that is not your responsibility. The only balance you can keep and you, you can keep control of is your own internal balance and the balance that affects your life. If you're trying to keep the balance for other people, you are, you are going to run yourself into the ground. Especially because it feels like these people are allowing you to do it just so that they can keep up their fight. You're enabling them, Libra or you're enabling a Libran, okay? With it, however it, it resonates, okay? Closing, oh no, no, I'm sorry. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Libra, you have the Page of Wands. Your challenge is to re-identify yourself. Your challenge is to maybe even send some sort of message. What I'm getting here is this is a message of changing changing the way you're approaching the situation, changing the way you show up in the situation. And that's kind of why I feel like this is also an energy of changing, uh, re-identifying yourself. It's almost an energy of sending a message to someone that is reclassifying your position or your involvement in the situation. Even if that means you are completely removing yourself from the situation, you're still reclassifying or, or, or re-identifying your place in the, in the situation or the circumstance, okay? And that has a lot to do with this hermit energy here because I do see the knight of, of I'm sorry, the page of wands as a minor arcana version of the hermit, right? Okay, <clears throat> the page of wands is coupled with, ah, yes, the six of pentacles. Re, redrawing your, your, your lines, your, your affiliation here in terms of what is more balanced and reciprocal. Again, I feel like there are a lot of Librans out there that are giving, a, giving of themselves to a situation that they, don't need, they really don't need to be involved in. 
because it's really not any of their business and it's not any of their problem. However, because these are people that are significant to you, whether this be family members, close friends, uh, business partners, whatnot, whatever, because these people have, you feel this sense of duty to these people or this situation. And so you're giving of yourself to try and strike some sort of, sort of balance, but it's draining you. It's causing you to get wrapped up into circumstances that you have no business being in to begin with, okay? And so here, this challenge is for you to re-identify your position or your involvement in a situation in terms of what is more reciprocal, what is more balanced. So if the situation is not, is not reciprocal at all, I really do feel some of you are going to be completely removing yourself out of this. It's like, look, I may have been in on this with you, or I may have been on your side for this uh, in this and this for a while here, but uh, this is <laughs> this has nothing to do with me. I really just need to remove myself from this. Okay. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Libra, in the first half of your reading. Ah, uh, look at that, the Ten of Cups. Happiness, fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. And this really, I mean, this 10 of cups feels like a dream come true. And it's really just because you are now free. You, I'm, I'm feeling such a sense of freedom with this 10 of cups. It's like your, emo your, your emotions or your reality are not burdened down or not bogged down by this circumstance anymore. The moment you release yourself from this is the, the moment you choose to remove yourself from this situation and you take action on that is the moment that you are emotionally free and clear to do whatever it is that you want to do to fulfill yourself. Okay. Ten of Cups is coupled with <laughs> the Four of Swords. <sighs> But so, okay, so with this Four of Swords energy here, there's another there's 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 another message of needing to take some time for yourself to contemplate what actually is going to be fulfilling for you. Okay, rest and meditate on this. Take this time to separate yourself to to remove yourself from these this circumstance or these energies, and to allow those energies to be purged out of your system. To then f try and start to generate your own and understanding of what is going to be your wish fulfillment or your ultimate emotional fulfillment here. This doesn't, this 10 of cups doesn't really feel like you really bringing anyone else into the situation right now. This, I mean, yes, I'm, what I'm, what I, okay, I, I guess I'm getting, I'm picking up on this because some of you are asking, does this 10 of cups mean I'm going to have a family? Does this 10 of cups mean that, you know, I'm going to have the love and the relationship I want, blah, blah, That's not really what I'm picking up here, especially if we're talking about a twin flame situation and you're seeing this 10 of cups and it's like, well, if I separate from this situation, does that mean my masculine or my feminine is going to come, come back for me and whatnot? Not, does this mean that our relationship or our 11 11 on the counter uh, not on the counter on the time wow it's funny that i'm talking about twin flames at this moment and i see 11 11 <laughs> anyway um I, I guess you're asking this question of well if i if i fine if i if i give in if if i surrender and go through this separation process does this mean that my my masculine or my feminine is going to come back for me or does this mean that we're going to come together and i want to stop you right there because the very first thing i will caution you against is going through this surrendering process and this separation process with the express um desire uh, with intentions of having them come back. The only reason that you need to go into this separation and, se and surrender to the whatever the process is for you right now is so that you can do your own healing. It has nothing to do, fuck the other person, completely forget about them right now. You need to focus on you. So no, this Ten of Cups is not saying to me, oh yes, you're going to find, you know, that marriage or that, that, that husband, that wife, that family, blah, blah, blah. What? No, 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 no. What this Ten of Cups is saying to me is you need to go into this hermit mode. You need to go into this cocooning phase and you need to con contemplate what your ultimate Ten of Cups is going to look like for you. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the specific person that is that shows up in your life to help you realize this, you need to really figure out what is the what is going to be your wish fulfillment. What is going to be the expression of... Uh, emotional fulfillment for you? How would that look like? What would it feel like? 
You need some time to release the external influences that have been twisting you up and pushing you in directions you don't want to really be going in. So take the focus off the other person, take the focus off the external circumstances and go within to find the answers for yourself, okay? All right. All right, Libra, let's get into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you. Two of Wands. You have a very, you have a very important decision to make, Libra. For whomever it is that I'm channeling for, and this maybe this is just like collectively for who I'm, whomever I'm channeling for, channeling for, or maybe this is just a more specific message, but I'm getting a very strong feeling that you have been giving of yourself way too much to others and not giving to yourself, giving of yourself to yourself. And it's time for you to do that. This choice that you need to make is what is the direction that I need to go in that is going to best serve my highest good? What does that even look like? But you have got to take some time to focus on you and meditate on that first before you can even make this choice. But that choice is coming up. Actually, I kind of feel like this choice is staring you dead in the face right now. But with that two of swords energy that came out in the pre-shuffle, some of you are actively denying making this choice at all, in denial about whether if, whether you need to make this choice or whether you need to move in a different direction. Okay, two of wands is coupled with. Say it with me, y'all. Ten of wands, burdens, strife. You are carrying way too much, Libra. You have got to choose what is right for you. Okay. You, some of you have, I just, I just said it. Some of you have been giving too much of your own selves to others and not enough to yourself. You are carrying these burdens that other people are glad, gleefully, willfully throwing on your shoulders. Why? Because you are so willing to carry the load. You got to stop because it's not serving you. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Libra. In the second half of your reading, you have my, my. Right over to the Three of Wands now. That's very interesting. And this kind of is bringing back that energy of some of you know the choice that you need to make. Some of you, this choice is staring you right in the face. So all you need to do now is commit to it. And start to, excuse me, move in that direction. Three of Wands is about waiting on a return for an investment, but also for me as a reader, it can represent um, the momentum. Having made a choice and then following through with that choice with an effort to, with an effort to receive something in the future. You can, so, so in the progress of the wands, you have the Ace of Wands, which is the inspiration, the Two of Wands, which is the choice and how to, how, how to move, how to go about it, what direction to move in. The Three of Wands is now the follow through. So what I was picking up on with the fact that some of you know exactly what it is you need to do or the, what exactly what it is the choice that you need to make and yet you're refusing to make to do so, you've got to just make that choice and now follow through with it. And this Ten of Wands could be a plethora of illusionary reasons as to why you can't make this choice. But again, that is a lie. And that is you taking on the burdens and the beliefs of all the other people around you that don't necessarily want you going in this new direction. And I understand that you'll feel, you kind of feel like you might be abandoning certain individuals, but also I really do feel like that these certain individuals that you would be ab abandoning, they're, they're grown adults. Like they are very capable of doing for themselves, of handling certain circumstances for themselves, but you keep enabling them by allowing yourself to take on some things that you don't need to be taking on at all. Okay. Three of wands is coupled with, <laughs> looky here, the four of cups, the universe is handing you this opportunity and you're kind of like, mm, I don't know. I can't do that. I'm, I'm so full. What about, but these people need me. It's like, no, you need yourself actually. You are literally rejecting the ace of cups of divine love and unconditional love. Even self-union is what I'm hearing for some of you in terms of just for the sake of what everyone else is going to think. And especially if we're talking I, because inner union or self-union was just said, was just um, 
pointed out to me. So for those of you that are dealing with this on a twin flame front, some of you are even in an energy of being afraid of what others would think of you, especially others within like the twin flame community or the even just the spiritual community, or maybe just even your friends and family that you may have told about the situation and the circumstance and, and you know, mentioned how you would always love this person. You'll always be there for them. You know, no one else will compare to them. You want to marry them, this, that, and the third. But now all of a sudden you're facing the, 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 the element of needing to separate yourself from them needing to cut them off or needing to cut them out of your life. You are afraid of the fact that if you take up this cup of self-love and you start to really honor and nurture yourself and love yourself fully and unconditionally, which means cutting out people, places, and circumstances that are toxic to you, including your twin, you are afraid of what others are going to say. But quite frankly, Fuck what they have to say, number one. Number two, they don't know exactly, they really have no idea what this journey is about other than what you tell them. And even as even you can tell them until you're, you're blue in the face and they will still never fully understand it because they're not on it themselves. This is in the terms of people actually being on the journey or not. Three, this is part of the journey. You two need to separate from each other so that you can go through your own healing process. You can go through the process of becoming whole and independent within yourself. This is absolutely part of the process. So if there are people around you that are saying, oh, you're not a true twin or, or blah, 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 or like giving you shit because you're like, look, I gotta, I gotta separate from this person. I actually, I have no choice. I have to cut this person out of my life at this point. If there are people that are giving you shit for that, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Period. Because anyone, anybody that truly knows this journey knows that you are going to go through a period of isolation. You are going to go through a period where you do not speak to your twin. You will go through a period where you don't even, you may not even ever want to see them again. You may never want to see them again. But that's just a part of the learning, the purging, and the healing process. Do not let these external influences sway you any longer. You have got to take your power back, Libra, or for the cross watcher, okay? Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Libra, ha, letting go, the four of pentacles. There's literally nothing else to say other than the challenge right here that is represented by that four of pentacles is letting go, releasing your hold. I understand that whatever it is you've been holding on to is giving you a sense of security, but it is time for you to step out of your comfort zone, Libra. Period. Point blank. There is no other way to say it. Four of Pentacles is coupled with... <laughs> the Lovers. Yeah, so okay. For some of you, we are talking Twin Flames. And if that's the case, I am talking to the Feminine right now. You have got to let go. You've got to let go. I'm hearing you've got to let go of this twin flame relationship. The only way that it has any, any chance of coming back to you, Libra or cross watcher, is if you fully release it, 100% completely release it. Because it needs its time to learn and to grow and to heal itself just like you do. But also the lovers is talking about a choice, Libra. And that choice is between vice or virtue. Vice being the wants, desires, and needs and beliefs and instructions of other people versus virtue, the wants, needs, desires, and instructions coming straight from your heart. Your challenge in, in what this is saying here is you're being challenged to let go of the external circumstances and choose to honor whatever it is you would need to do in order to, to honor yourself, honor your heart, and heal your heart. Period. You're challenged with choosing you, Libra, over everyone else. Four of Cups. Yes? Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Libra, you have the Seven of Cups, confusion. What if, what if, what if, so what? Yeah, Libra, okay, what if? 
What if? Like, what's the worst that could happen, Libra? What, are you going to die? I highly doubt that. You might feel like you're going to die. And I, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to sound incredulous. I'm not trying to mock you right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm being straight up. Like literally Libra, what's the absolute worst that could happen? You never see this person again. You never speak to this person again. If we're talking twin flames. So the fuck what? So what? If that's the case and that was meant to be. And I, I, I assure you, I promise you. That whomever comes in to replace them is going to be light years better than whatever that person had to offer you. So really, Libra, what if? And so the fuck what? <laughs> right? Seven of Cups is coupled with the Tower. It's almost as if Libra, this, this seven of cups, especially in terms of this tower energy, it's also an energy of, for some of you, there are just so many instances of proof. It's like you're surrounded by proof as to why you should leave this situation behind you. It's like the universe has not shorted, has, is in no shortage of giving you example after example after example after example after red flag after red flag after red flag after red flag. I could go on. I could go on forever. And so could the universe. So even if we're not talking about a twin flame situation or whatnot, whatever, like fuck all that shit. Okay, fine. Whatever this circumstance is for you, it's like there is no shortage of red flags. There is no shortage of examples as to why this is, this situation needs to be dismantled. You're ready to do this. Four of wands. You're ready to do this, Libra. You have just got to take the step. I'm hearing you've got to take the leap of faith. Okay, let's get your oracle guidance here. Whoa. And also, like, in terms of, like, even if this is not a twin flame situation, it's like, Okay, so fine. So you get out of one situation with somebody that was pretty heavy and pretty toxic, but you don't actually go through the healing process that is needed to close out that cycle. You're just going to keep aligning with that type of situation or, or those types of people. Until you dismantle what needs to be dismantled, Libra, you are not, or Crosswatcher, you are not going to escape this ever. Until you do the work to heal from this, to dismantle the tower, the belief system, the structure, or, or the, 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 the reality that, that struck the reality, re reality structure that you are aligning to that just keeps bringing this back. The universe is infinite in its ways that it can keep bringing this up for you until you learn the lesson and do what it is you need to do about it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Oracle guidance, Libra. One more shuffle for my Librans, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January 2020. Let's see what we've got for you, Libra. For my Libras. Please don't feel bad. I feel like if you're still here with me in this in this reading, I feel like your 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 self-esteem has taken a little bit of a hit. You've taken a little bit of a drop. Please don't sink into that. You're not a bad person. And it it it, it please don't beat yourself up about this. All right. We're all humans here. We're all trying to learn. And yeah, these this is difficult. This is not easy, okay? <laughs> Being on earth and, and dealing with the lessons that we have to deal with on earth, this is no picnic. This is not a walk in the park. This is not like, this is not a stroll through Disney World, guys. This is some real shit, all right? This is one of the hardest lessons, the hardest schools that we will experience in this universe, okay? So please don't beat yourself up about this. You have card number 18, Kuntur uh, Yachak, Yachak, Kuntur Yachak, blessings from the son of Hanapacha. 
I'm so sorry if I'm butchering <laughs> the pronunciation of these of these cards here. So sorry. But anyway, well, let's read it. Card number 18. Now, 18 does boil down to a 9, which is an ending, okay? And often these endings are not the easiest to deal with. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Okay. So this card says, I really would like this to focus a little bit more, but it doesn't seem to want to do that, so that's fine. Okay, anyway. This card says, Condor swiftly brings the will of Great Spirit down to Earth through the gift of powerful medicine. Despite great odds, even in the face of what may appear to be an, in an inevitable defeat, extraordinary, ex excuse me, extraordinary triumph is at hand. This is the prophecy of resurrection, of the rising up of what was thought to be lost. It shall happen with unexpected and surprising swiftness. Your divine destiny is now held in the guiding hand of a great spiritual master. In a reading, this says, Condors are born with their eyes open, but do not have vocal cords to speak. You have always seen clearly. Trust in this, even if you struggle to find the words to express all that you see. Condors reveal emotion through changes in their skin color. This is a reminder to trust what your body is telling you. Your bodily intuition is a form of wisdom. You have a spiritual connection to the cosmic Christ consciousness, the universal sacred heart seeking to awaken itself in humanity. Your divine life purpose involves assuming the role of leader, guide, healer, and earth warrior for love on this planet in your own unique way. And in... An inviolable, inviolable, uh, sorry, this, I don't know what. Spiritual protection surrounds you. I don't know what that word was. <laughs> I've never seen it before, and I don't, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, there you have it, Libra. All right. Um, I really hope this was helpful for you. Um, so uh, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of February. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!